I'm Daniel Glick of The Story Group. I'd like to tell you a story about how unbridled energy development in Wyoming is carving up an ancient animal migration route. The North American pronghorn evolved with speedy prehistoric predators to become the continent's fastest mammal. They migrate with the seasons and survive on sage leaves they paw from the snow during the harsh, high desert winters. For at least 6,000 years, a herd of pronghorn has been migrating from present-day Grand Teton National Park into the upper Green River Valley, where they spend the winter before returning to the park in spring. The round trip covers 160 miles, the longest migration of any land animal in the lower 48. Over the course of several seasons, I followed much of the pronghorn's migration path by truck, on foot, and on horseback. This migration is getting more difficult with each passing year due to development pressures and an energy extraction boom that is eating up critical winter range for the pronghorn and other animals. In 20 years of covering public lands issues in the West through all sorts of mining, grazing, logging, and other controversies, I've never witnessed a place where the federal government incurred such rapid development in the country's widest open spaces. If current trends continue, this pronghorn herd will probably become, as the Native Americans called the elusive antelope, prairie ghosts. Near Blacktail Butte in Grand Teton National Park, I met Joel Berger, a biologist with the Wildlife Conservation Society. Berger and fellow biologist Kim Murray proposed the creation of a national migration corridor to protect what they call the path of the pronghorn. Fawns born in the park in the late spring must survive spring snowstorms, freezing nights, coyotes, badgers, cougars, bears, eagles, disease, river crossings, SUVs. Then comes the hard part. By late summer, these pronghorn leave the national park and head toward their winter range near the town of Pinedale. Kim Murray tracks the migration up the Grovant River through several narrow corridors like the Red Hills Bottleneck, where this path, carved by pronghorn hooves, crosses above some rapids and below an impassable cliff band, the only possible migration route on this side of the river. In 2008, the U.S. Forest Service officially designated this part of the pronghorn's path as a migration corridor, the first of its kind. On the other side of the ridge, however, the pronghorn face an obstacle course of ranchette subdivisions, buckrail fences, and guard dogs. Here in the upper Green River Valley, the headwaters of the Colorado River, the surviving pronghorn soon leave the relative protection of the National Migration Corridor. When the animals cross Highway 191 near Pinedale, they head for their winter range where a natural gas boom in the past decade has transformed these sage flats into an industrial zone, as these satellite images of the nearby Jonah Field show in stark, time-lapse detail. Now comes the really hard part. Bernie Holtz, a biologist with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, worries about roadkill and roustabouts and the effect of intense development on the pronghorn, mule deer, moose, elk, and sage grouse that share this winter range. Pinedale has been transformed, like many other places in the West, by this startlingly rapid boomtown development. Linda Baker was Pinedale's librarian until the recent gas boom propelled her to raise awareness of the water and air pollution brought on by the intense development not to mention the effects on wildlife and strains on the local community from this exponential growth. For several years running, Pinedale had air quality readings that would make Los Angeles blush, with repeated ozone levels that exceeded federal standards. In 2007, Baker helped spread the news that 21 pronghorn were killed in a single truck collision on an energy service road. The Bureau of Land Management, a federal agency that is supposed to balance the needs of energy development, wildlife resources, and recreation, manages most of the public land in question. Baker is not alone when she complains that every value has been subservient to energy production. These scenes are being repeated across the Rocky Mountain West, in the Piance Basin in Colorado, in the San Juan Basin in New Mexico, and elsewhere. The West's iconic landscapes and animals are paying a steep price for our energy addictions. One night in Pinedale, I went to a community fundraiser at the Civic Auditorium. 
The Bar J Wranglers, a cowboy musical group from Jackson Hole, played and sang to longtime ranching families who had watched with alarm as their backyards had been transformed into a series of drilling rigs, cement pads, pipelines, and the rumble of non-stop activity. As I sat there, I wondered, if other Americans saw what I had seen, would it stir enough outrage and concern over what's being lost to inspire them to insist that this kind of free-for-all development be corralled, slowed, and done in a way that didn't destroy so much in its path? At the end of the show, the group sang a slow a cappella version of a song. It sounded like a dirge, an ode to a disappearing landscape.